Hello everyone and Happy New Year. I'm Natalia Bilbao and here's what's happening in LA this week. The nonprofit LA Mission, which has been helping people in need in Los Angeles since 1936, held a holiday event to bring a winter wonderland to Skid Row. Not only did they provide goods and services, but Mayor Karen Bass stopped by to help serve food, which the LA Mission does all year round. Yeah, right now we're having our Christmas event. It's our celebration, bringing a winter wonderland to Skid Row. We're gonna have snow in the back. We're having our gifts to all the children, clothing to the families, food. We're providing shelter referrals. If you want to get connected to housing, get back into employment. We have haircuts today. We got manicures going down today. Everything's happening in this space all at one time because we really wanted to incorporate a service market with our ability to serve food. And so we're really excited about it. I've actually been here several times and I enjoy serving food to people who I know need it. But the Los Angeles Mission is one of our great organizations that's helping downtown. These are our friends and our neighbors. These are people that live in this community. There are members of this community that's here today. And so that's why it's important. They didn't come, they didn't get bust in. They actually live here and we're here to serve them and let them know that they matter. I'm glad they're doing something for Skid Row, you know? Because Skid Row has been down and out, but this is a good cause for Skid Row. Aquí venimos a agarrar regalos para los niños. Pues me parece muy bien, excelente por los niños, porque sabemos que hay muchos niños que necesitan, hay muchos padres que están escasos de recursos, pues vienen aquí a por los regalos para los niños. Anybody can get help year long, 30, 35, 365 days a year, 24 7. The LA Mission is always open and they can come and be a part of what we're doing here. People can come and volunteer. People can call our resource line. They can get connected to resources in real time. We're here to help. A new year means new opportunities, new beginnings, and in the case of the Los Angeles Police Department, new traffic laws. Channel 35 spoke to LAPD officer Matthew Cruz to learn about some of the most important updates pedestrians, drivers, and cyclists need to be aware of to stay safe in 2023. Take a look. January 1st, 2023, we are having a few new laws go into effect. They will be amending existing laws in the state of California. The first one I wanna talk about is Assembly Bill 2147, which affects jaywalking in general. In a sense, jaywalking will be decriminalized starting in 2023. What I mean by decriminalized is that you can now cross the street away from a crosswalk as long as there's no inherent danger to yourself or the public from a moving vehicle. So you will no longer be sighted or stopped unless you walk straight into oncoming traffic or you walk in a sense where a reasonably careful person would believe it's a danger to the public or themselves. What I can share with you regarding the new bicycle law, it's gonna be Assembly Bill 1909, where vehicles actually have to yield to bicycles in one lane. They actually have to move over to another lane to respect the bicycle's flow of travel. Cyclists still have to adhere to the existing laws of the rules of the road. They're still going to have to signal when they're going to change lanes. They can't go against traffic. Essentially, you are still a vehicle on the road. The laws that are gonna remain in effect, don't text and drive. And in general, don't be distracted while you're driving. So try not to put makeup on while you're driving, try not to eat while you're driving. Just drive responsibly. Coming into the new year, we would recommend as you're driving on the road, or if you're a bicyclist on the road even, be respectful of other people's spaces, be respectful of other people's vehicles, bicycles, be respectful of pedestrians as well. So just be safe out there, enjoy the new year, and let's start it off right. The LAPD wants the community to learn about laws and also teach kids some interesting new skills. Stick around for our story about their ice skating event. Despite feeling a sense of hope with things opening up, food insecurity is still an ongoing issue in our city. Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez recently held a drive through food distribution event for 500 families in need in Council District 7. 
This event was a way to guarantee people have food on their plates while food pantries are closed. This morning we're here at Hanson Dam in the Northeast Valley where we are going to be distributing to 500 families boxes of food, produce, uh, poultry, you name it. We're providing these resources during a time when so many families find themselves in desperation because of the closure of the food pantries during this time. Food pantries tend to close down during the holidays for a period of a couple of weeks, so we've started now the annual tradition of doing these food distribution events uh, to help fill that gap. She understands the need. There's a lot of distributions that happen, but very few that happen at times of crisis, when it's not comfortable. I mean, most people would like to be home under the fire. It's kind of uh, hard weather out here, but for us, it's really important to be present when people most need it. A lot of stuff is really high expense, and we need, and we appreciate this, uh, this job for this uh, office. Very good, I mean, very good opportunity for the families during the holidays. It's not only food, whatever we have, we put out in these distribution lines. We have feminine hygiene products today, we have hygiene products, soap, anything that we have, we push it out to the community. It's a sense of community and togetherness and uh, hope, and it's really wonderful. LA Repair has three million available in grants for community-based organizations. The LA Sanitation Department makes Christmas tree recycling easier, and the LA Al Fresco Dining Program is extended until May 31st. All these stories up next on City Beat. $3 million in grants is available from the Los Angeles Reforms for Equity and Public Acknowledgement of Institutional Racism, also known as LA Repair. Community-based organizations and nonprofits in Boyle Heights, Mission Hills, Panorama City, North Hills, and Southeast LA can submit proposals. The awards are part of LA's first participatory budget pilot program, which will distribute funds in nine LA neighborhoods called Repair Zones. Participatory budgeting is a democratic process in which community members decide how to spend part of a public budget. Info on LA Repair's grant application, which is due on January 20th, can be located at repair.lacity.org. When you are done with your holiday festivities, make sure that you have a green new year by recycling your Christmas tree. Simply remove the decorations, cut the tree into pieces, place it inside the green bin and put the bin out for regular pickup on collection day. If your tree is too big to fit in the bin, place it curbside next to the green waste bin on collection day or schedule a pickup with LA Sand. Residents can also drop off their trees at designated mulching facilities, Rick and Park locations and select LA City fire stations. LA Sand will recycle Christmas trees through February 4th and use them to produce compost and mulch that is available to residents for free. For the complete overview of Christmas tree recycling, including details about drop-off locations, visit lacitysand.org slash tree recycle. The Los Angeles Department of Transportation has extended the LA Al Fresco Dining Program until May 31st, 2023. The program was introduced in May 2020 to assist local food establishments impacted by COVID health restrictions. Through the program, eligible restaurants and bars can apply to expand dining areas into the street, sidewalk, and private adjacent lots. LADOT is working towards transitioning to make this permanent due to the LA Al Fresco Dining Program's success. Learn more about the regulations and application for LADOT's LA Al Fresco Program by visiting coronavirus.lacity.org slash LA Al Fresco. Their mission is to protect and serve. But did you know the LAPD also has an ice hockey team? During the holidays, the LAPD ice hockey team invited children from the missions in Skid Row to the LA Life Ice Rink to teach them how to skate. With events like this, the LAPD hopes to create a positive connection with the community and especially kids who need inspiring role models. 
This is our annual event where we bring the kids that are staying in the missions in Skid Row here to the LA Live ice rink. And our LAPD ice hockey team is here and we'll teach the kids how to skate. I want the kids to have fun, something memorable, and hopefully they'll remember it and love it and want to come back next year. Always give back because we're so lucky. We're all so lucky to have what we have. And some of these children don't. So that's why I'm here. For the last few years, we know there's been a disconnect for a variety of reasons. It's so important for us to reestablish the connection with the children to let them know that we are here to help, we're here to serve, we're here for them when they need us. And beyond just policing, just to engage people in a non-enforcement capacity like we should and we've always been trying to do. So we want to continue to build on that. That's what this is about. First, you're going to fall. But the main thing is, when you fall, is to get back up. Life lessons that I still use today at 63. Getting up, trying again, never giving up, and just keep fighting. Did you know Los Angeles is divided into 99 neighborhood councils? In 2023, elections are taking place for Angelinos to choose who will make their voices heard. Channel 35 spoke to Raquel Beltran from Empower LA, who explains how they work to support the locally elected volunteers that serve in the neighborhood council and how to get involved. Check it out. The Department of Neighborhood Empowerment is the department that was created to support the system of neighborhood councils in the city of Los Angeles. There are currently 99 neighborhood councils throughout the city. So our role is to support the locally elected volunteers that serve on those 99 neighborhood councils. We provide support and oversight. The department is an exciting department. It, everybody that is here is also very much interested in serving the public. They want all communities to have a voice at City Hall, and that's the most important part of this relationship between Empower LA, the neighborhood councils, and the stakeholders in the city of Los Angeles is that it's important for the public to have a voice at City Hall. You can do that through your neighborhood councils. You can go to those meetings, ask them to take the issues up that are important to you. They have a direct line to the city council. No other organization, no other community group has that kind of access to City Hall. Neighborhood council elections, they're going to happen in 2023. They usually happen on the odd numbered years. What I recommend that Angelinos do who are interested in running for their neighborhood council is to first find out which neighborhood council they live in. They can get that information from our website at empowerla.org. You can go to our elections page and the first thing that you'll see is find your neighborhood. Attend one of our candidate info sessions. They're one of the most resourceful things that we do to help people to be successful as candidates, but also to learn about what it means to be a board member on a neighborhood council board. I would like everyone to think about at least visiting a neighborhood council meeting if you've never done it before. Think about what it means to have such a close relationship with your civic leaders. Not all cities in the United States have a system of this kind. It's incredibly unique. And one of the things that make it unique is the fact that the board members are locally elected by you. In our first feature story of 2023, we take a look back at some of the highlights of 2022 to see how far we've come in 12 months. Los Angeles, a dynamic city in constant evolution, has witnessed everything from making our public transport greener to the record-breaking female representation in city council, including the first female mayor in the history of LA. Let's take a look back at 2022. You may have heard about a little piece of legislation that we passed on Friday to make sure that all new residential and commercial buildings in Los Angeles are gonna be built with zero carbon emissions, which is really, really exciting. We're setting this up for a beach cleanup for th almost 3,000 kids are coming to the beach today. When they step off the bus and they've never been to the beach before and they go, wow, this is incredible. 
I think I can save the Earth. After almost a decade of work to get this studied, funded, and staffed, here we are on the very first ride on a NoHo Dash Line bus. It is my great honor to welcome you to the opening ceremony for the City of Los Angeles' celebration of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Today we are at the big unveiling for the historic Filipino town Eastern Gateway and I'm so proud to be here because we are not just celebrating the largest Filipino monument in LA or in the state of California but in all of the United States. So today is our uh, Chinese Lantern Festival celebration. And you know that we've just had our Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, and we actually celebrate for two weeks. Today is our very first uh, Asian cultural festival. We are delighted to say that LA is for everyone and to let people know that we stand with our Asian American Pacific Islander community as they celebrate this day because LA is truly for everyone. In Korean language, Saigu, which means 4 to 9 or April 29, is the date the riots broke out. Today, as we announce the launch of our Saigu campaign, we are proud to reclaim the word Saigu to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the LA riots. This program is called Voices of the Rebellion, Reflections of the LA Uprising. It's historical and important to remember because it was a time in our history where there was so much angst and what people don't realize is what led up to it, the swell, the things that happened to black people in this country that led to this, this break. And so it's important to remember that so that we don't go back. There are a lot of communities and heritages that remember that particular break in their, in their history and they commemorate, they observe it, they bring it back so that it doesn't happen. I think this holiday is a great marker for what we can accomplish. We can do big things. We can overcome uh, our biggest challenges when we focus on them. So I'm happy to support uh, this and the mayor and the city of Los Angeles celebrating Juneteenth in an official way. Black America has been celebrating uh, this holiday for, for years. Uh, but to make it now an official celebration, first at national level and now at the city level, is significant and it demonstrates that we are serious about moving forward. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Watts Towers. We're 100 years old. We're celebrating 61 years of the Watts Towers Arts Center. We're also celebrating the 40th annual Watts Towers Day of the Drum Festival and the 45th annual Simon Rodea Watts Towers Jazz Festival. Today is Los Angeles celebration of Indigenous Peoples Day. Five years ago, Los Angeles led the initiative to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day, which to this day, five years later, Los Angeles is still the largest jurisdiction in the country to make that change. So today we're at South LA Pride in Norman Houston Park celebrating uh, the LGBTQ community, especially those in South LA, and especially people who have to deal with multiple things, being a person of color and being LGBTQ, being a woman and being LGBTQ, being a woman, being a person of color and being LGBTQ. All of those things come together. Uh, today we say take a breath, celebrate, we love you, we put our arms around you. People need to see who we are, that we're here, that we're proud to be here, and that we're not going anywhere at all. Just to be in your own community, in a public, in a safe space, in a space that has been supported by a lot of businesses, a lot of media, um, it just feels nice to be able to be who you are and to be able to do that publicly, openly, and without any shame. 
Hispanic Heritage Month is so important to me because it's my identity. I wear it with me every single day. I think Angelino should care about Hispanic Heritage Month because Hispanics uh, contribute a large amount of the culture of Los Angeles. September 15 to October 15 is historically the time where many Latin American countries declare their independence. So I think it's a very important month for us to pause, learn about our history, pass it on to new generations, and to also celebrate the contributions that we have given to our nation as a whole. here in Pacoima is an annual celebration that I host here in the community of Pacoima in front of Pacoima City Hall. And it's an opportunity to not just community build and bring everyone together, but to honor the loved ones that so many of us have lost, not just through the course of the pandemic, but just through the course of living. Today we're celebrating the grand opening of the new 6th Street Viaduct. Uh, it's so special to all of us who have worked on this project. I personally have started on the project 19 years ago. For me, it's really about the community. They've been with us, they've input. That's how we ended up with these 10 pair of arches and just an incredible new icon for Los Angeles. Tuesday, the first residents experiencing homelessness will come through these doors. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in the Trebek Center, a place that the people of Los Angeles built because they believe that there should be hope for those who are living on the street. This center will be a life transformation center, a chance for people to get a second chance in life, to get renewed dreams, their vision ignited, to start over. I'm so proud to stand here among all of you to celebrate the opening of Conrad. I'm excited because the Grand LA will have over 400 units of housing, of which 87 are affordable units. And people are scratching their heads saying, how did that happen? Insistence, persistence, and in Spanish, we say ganas. Ganas is that fire in the belly that says, come on, we gotta make it happen. And we did. George is one of our clients. He's been uh, living in our residential program for at least 20 years. He loves LAPD. Our special guest is uh, George Stanley. His lifelong dream has always been to become a police officer. And today, with great help from LAPD, we're making that dream come true. Officer George Stanley, you'll be working with Sergeant Rebus this morning. Okay? You'll be assigned the mission to Griffith Park and the York Quarter, you'll be making contact with citizens. George, that's, that's your boss. That's your boss. <laughs> that's Captain Waters. Yeah. That's your I'm boss. I'm so glad you could join us today. <laughs> Well, it's history in the making. The first woman fire marshal of the LA Fire Department is about to become the first woman chief of the LA Fire Department. I tell you, my feelings were really mixed. I was very excited. I was uh, not shocked, but timing of it. I wasn't quite sure when and if this would ever happen. So when the mayor approached me and we had a, a number of conversations and then eventually when he made that decision, you know, took a deep breath and say, okay, you know, let's do this. 
You know, in the 241 years that the city has existed, only 23 women have ever been elected to serve on the Los Angeles City Council. It took till 2022 to reach a record number. The first female city attorney, and of course, our first female mayor. It's quite an important story to tell. I, Karen Ruth Bass, I, Karen Ruth Bass, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I call on our city to not just dream of the LA we want, but to participate in making the dream come true. If we come together and focus on solutions rather than jurisdictions, on locking arms rather than pointing fingers. We will save lives and we will save our city. And this is my mission as your mayor. So let's come together and build it together. Thank you, Los Angeles. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the trust. I am honored. Join LA Works at their Martin Luther King Day of Service. Explore ancestral games at the 42nd annual Black Doll Show, or learn about the art of suminigashi, Japanese paper marbling. All this up next on Things to Do. Nearly six decades ago, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. addressed 15,000 Angelinos at the LA Memorial Coliseum. Central to his message were human dignity and race relations. In 2023, LA Works continues their long tradition of honoring Dr. King's legacy by empowering Angelinos to take action. The entire family is welcome to join the MLK Day of Service starting at 12 noon with a food festival, fair, and volunteer projects. The MLK Day of Service happens Monday, January 16th, beginning at 12 p.m. The volunteer service projects begin at 1.30 p.m. Log on to laworks.com slash MLK for more information. The 42nd Annual Black Doll Show is the longest running annual exhibition in Los Angeles. The Black Doll Show explores ancestral games and how play can help us think deeper. Studies allow us a look into how games are part of social negotiations within various African and Afro-Creole cultures. Examining identity, agency, and power through dolls, history, and the culture of gaming allows us to see power dynamics and identity through games and play. The 42nd Annual Black Doll Show is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 12 to 5 p.m. Log on to culturela.org event for more information. The ancient art of suminagashi, or floating ink, is believed to be the oldest form of marbling, originating in China 2,000 years ago and practiced in Japan by Sinto priests as early as the 12th century. Delicate patterns are produced on paper when colors of ink are floated on the surface of water, then blown across to form delicate swirls. Marbling quickly became popular with members of the Japanese royal court. By the 17th century, it spread throughout England, France, Germany, Holland, and Italy as a way to turn plain paper into art. You can learn the same technique of paper marbling at the Central Public Library Saturday, January 14th from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And that's a look at some things to do. And that's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Bobal, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org, and we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA 